The other API that we have is the connection API. This is a cursor-based pagination API. It's only for retrieving data. And it works on the premise that you have a sort and a filter over a particular set of models, and those give you a subset of models in a specific order. And if that filter and the sort remain the same, uh, then you can generate a cursor, which is a unique representation for where each model sits inside the collection. And then pagination is done by saying, I want to start at this cursor and give me 10 models afterwards. The main problem with the REST APIs when you're fetching a lot of data is when new data comes in. So if you start at the very beginning and say, give me 10 models and skip 10, so you should get the second page. If somebody adds another model to the front of the collection, then your second page is actually off by one. If somebody adds two models, your second page is off by two. If you're using a cursor-based model, you're saying, find the tenth model and give me ones after this. Once you've got the cursor for the tenth model, that's always going to be in the same place. So people can give you add stuff to the front of the collection, but your pagination will carry on working correctly. It's also a lot quicker than doing skip and limit due to the way MongoDB works. Right, so let's give a quick example of this. We're going to, we've headed over to the docs, HTTP interfaces connection, and we're going to grab the endpoint here. I think this is actually a slight typo, this should be statement instead of statements. So if anyone wants to submit a pull request for that, it would be appreciated. Uh, right, we shouldn't post to this endpoint, this is get only. We've got our authorization already set. And right, we get back a bunch of information. So at a very high level, this is edges, which contains all of our models, and page info, which contains information about the pagination. So we're at the very start of the collection, so it has previous page is false, and has next page is true. And we've got a pointer, a cursor, to the start and the end of the models we fetched. We've got a few different parameters that we can pass. Uh, these are all outlined in the docs over here. Sort, filter, project, hint, first and after. So the first is a limit of how many models we want. That defaults to 10 but you can set it to whatever number you need. If you set it too high, eventually the request will fail because it will time out. Uh, if you set it too low, you'll have to make a bunch of requests. So just play around with that until you get the number you need. Let's uh, show an example of project. So what we want is to open the params browser. We want a project parameter. And the value for this is JSON. So inside our edges, we have a cursor, which corresponds to that particular model, and a node, which is the actual model from the DB. And the node is just the raw statement that we would get inside Learning Locker. So there's a lot of information in here. You get the full statement, but maybe we only want to look at verbs, for example. If we only wanted to see the verb, we would add statement.verb. This is JSON, so we have to make sure that it's valid, it's got quotes, no trailing commas. And to say that it's included, we pass a 1. If we wanted to project without this, we would pass a 0. We would get everything but statement.verb. So this should work fine. Now inside all of our nodes, we're only seeing the ID. So the ID is always included by default. You can actually turn that off, but you have to specifically set that you don't want it. And statement.verb and everything underneath it. We've got a bunch of verbs in here. We've got um, joined, joined, called, completed. It might be that we only want to see a specific verb. So we can add a filter parameter. Um, that again is JSON. One statement.verb.id. 
because that's the part that uniquely identifies the verb. And we'll say we only want to see calls. Send that. Now it's only called verbs. The after parameter says the cursor that you'd like to start your pagination from. So if you're getting the next page, say we got halfway through this collection and we wanted to go from, let's see, one, two, say we wanted to go from the third model in. We'll apply this as the after. If we look at our pagination info at the bottom, has previous page is false because we're at the very start of the collection. But if we start halfway through, so we're now going on from that cursor, has previous page is now true because there's some behind this cursor. That pretty much sums it up. Um, everything else is outlined in detail in the docs and you can hop onto our Gitter if there's any more detailed questions that you have.